Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel. Gonna do a quick uh, dig video. I just got back from Phoenix. Uh, went there for uh, my sister's wedding. Um, so we were there for a couple days for my sister's wedding. And then uh, we went to California for three days to Disney with my daughter for her birthday. Uh, came back for a day and then we were back here. I, I actually got very little time to dig this time. I didn't have time to meet up with anybody, my friends. It was literally... We got there, we did the, uh, the first night was the wedding, uh, what is it, the, uh, the run through, the walk through, and then dinner, the next day was the wedding, the day after that was a lunch with my family, and then we headed out to, to California, we were there for three days, hit, uh, at Disney, and, uh, Disneyland, and, uh, California Adventure, came back for a day, uh, and then uh, this morning we are back on the flight here. So I literally got to go to two Zias um, that that last Saturday before the um, before the uh, walkthrough, the wedding walkthrough, and then uh, yesterday uh, between us getting back to Phoenix and us going out to dinner with the entire family, um, I had a couple hours, so I hit two Zias. Um, I hit, um, the Ingroove and I hit Asylum Records. Um, still got some really cool stuff. Still got quite a few things, but, uh, uh, usually I hit, there, there's so many record stores in Phoenix. I mean, there's, there are six or seven Zias, um, and all the Zias have great stuff. Um, you've got the Ingroove, um, you've got the Record Room. Um, I, I mean, there, there, there's so many, um. But uh, I wanted to make sure I hit the Ingroove. That's one of my favorite record stores in Phoenix. I wanted to hit, hit up the Asylum. Um, so uh, the the first day, that first day, I was able to go to uh, the two Zias. Actually, I'm sorry. Uh, on Monday, how was it Monday? Yeah, Monday. Um, I I had to run swap out our rental car uh, before we left for California. And when I was swapping it out, it was only like 15 minutes away from the, the in group. So I went ahead and went there. Um, so we'll start off with the, I, I picked up one record at each Zia. I can't remember where I got all the singles from. Uh, I think I got, actually, I do know. Uh, let's see. Let me separate them real quick. Most of them I actually did get from Zia now that I think about it. Oh, it's about half and half. Um, so I went to the two Zias. I picked up some cool stuff. Uh, the first thing I grabbed at the first Zia was uh, Flotsam and Jetsam Live in Phoenix. Um, this was released in 2019. I never saw this. I, I love Flotsam and Jetsam. I don't know how I missed this. Um, it's, uh, let's see, limited edition red vinyl, 300 copies. I ended up seeing this at two or three stores in Phoenix, which makes sense. Flotsam and Jetsam is a hometown band. Um, I just don't know how I, I didn't see this anywhere else or haven't seen anybody shown the, show this because... Uh, um, quite a few of you that, that I talk to regularly are huge Flotsam and Jetsam fans. Um, so uh, for those of you who are, make sure you go out and get this while you can. Um, but live in Phoenix. This is from uh, The Bash on Ash in 2003. I don't even know if The Bash on Ash is still there. Um, I barely, I, I, I've been to that club before, but it's been so long that I, I, I don't remember it at all. But uh, very cool. Let's see. So I got that, and what I get? I think I got this one at that same Zia. Uh, this is Motorhead. Uh, train kept a rolling, and uh, nothing else matters. It's Lemmy doing that one. Uh, another one. I don't know how I did. I haven't seen this one, but uh, I actually saw a couple more Motorheads, but they were recent reissues, and they wanted like forty bucks for them. And I know I can find them for cheaper than that. But uh, there you go. I think I paid like 12 bucks for that one. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so always stoked to get Motorhead. Uh, then I went to the second Zia. Um, and I ended up getting Haunt. Uh, if Icarus could fly. Now you guys all know I'm a huge fan of Haunt. Um, and I already have this album. But what's cool about this one is it's signed by the entire touring band. So... Um, all of the albums are done by Trevor Church. Um, he does everything, and uh, 
he writes, he does all the instruments, um, sort of like a uh, uh, high standard, uh, Chris, Chris Black with high standard, high standard, um, not high standard, oh, give me a second, uh, high spirits, sorry. Um, but he does tour with a band, same thing with, with Chris Black. And uh, so it was kind of cool to see this. I've got a couple things that are signed by Trevor. So this is Trevor right here. Um, and, and I know his, his autograph very well. So I knew this was legit. Uh, it's just kind of cool to see it signed by the, the whole touring band. So, uh, and this was under 20 bucks. I think I paid 18 or $19 for this. So uh, really killer score there. And then at that Zia, I also picked up uh, the first demo from Minor Threat. I've talked about uh, Minor Threat and uh, uh, Minor Threat, Fugazi, uh, Teen Idols. Um, I love everything that Ian Mackay does. Uh, the guy's an absolute genius. Um, I didn't have this on uh, on seven inch, uh, so super stoked to have this one. I just showed the Teen Idols one. Uh, maybe four or five months ago, but still cool to have. And it, it's a repress. Um, he represses these every few years, which which is cool. It keeps them in circulation. Um, originals are impossible to find. And if you do, they go for thousands of dollars. Uh, so very cool to have this. And then uh, I don't remember who showed this one. Um, yeah, I, I can't think of who did it. But uh, I ran across it and I had to grab it. This is John 5. I'm not really a huge John 5 fan, but what's cool about this one is uh, the A side. The song Que Pasa is Dave Mustaine on vocals. And the B side looks like it's an instrumental of Georgia on my mind with uh, John playing guitar and Peter Chris playing drums. Uh, so when I saw this, it was something that piqued my interest when I saw somebody show. Maybe it was Chris. Um, I, can't remember. I can't think of Chris's last name. Uh, drummer Chris, who was the drum tech for Charlie Benanti. I'm sorry, Chris. I don't know why your name is not coming to me, but uh, still, uh, I was intrigued. So when I saw this for eight bucks, I had to grab it. Uh, so that was it for the Zias. Um, again, uh, on Monday, on that Monday, when I went to swap out the cards, I stopped at the Ingroove. The Ingroove is one of my favorite record stores in Phoenix. Um, the guys, the guys there are really cool. I've, uh, I order stuff from them pretty regularly. As a matter of fact, um, I just got this from them not too long ago. The uh, Blonde on Blonde box set from Mobile Fidelity. Um, he seems to get, he's got a really good relationship with MoFi and stuff that sells out on MoFi's uh, website really quick. He usually still ends up getting like 10 copies or so. Uh, so um i've been able to take advantage of that relationship he has with them a couple of times to get some stuff that i try it's funny um i was talking to somebody uh, i had commented about this was the one dylan that i missed that i really regretted from mofi because you could get this for quite a while from their website unfortunately the price has gone up like 20 bucks from what it was originally but uh that was one that, that i i never grabbed and i kind of kicked myself for and I literally posted that message and maybe two days later, um, it popped up for sale and it sold out instantly. Um, I got the email. I was on the website within 15 minutes and they were sold out. A couple days later, a few more popped up on the website. The same thing happened. I missed it. Um, regardless, um, the guys at the Ingroove have always been really cool. And uh, unfortunately, they just moved to a new store and it wasn't completely set up yet. Uh, it was... Uh, most of the stuff was there, but you could tell, um, there was quite a bit that, that, that wasn't done yet. None, none of the stuff was on the walls. None of their high dollar albums that they usually have up were up. They usually have some really nice collectible stuff and, and usually I'll get one or two things when I'm there and none of that stuff was out yet. So, um, I still found a couple of cool things. Um, they had some really cool, uh, something that they had that was cool was that two or, uh, two, was it two? maybe hardware and headhunter from crocus um he had the test pressings and i was going to grab them they were decent they were they were both one was like 20 bucks and one was like 30 bucks um and i was going to grab them um i decided to leave them though for somebody who was more into i, I like crocus but 
Um, not enough that I, I felt like I needed this. I've got some uh, mint pressings of those. So I figured I'd leave them there for somebody who really wanted them. But uh, I did find some cool stuff. Um, this first one I have never seen before. Um, I'm a big fan of Mama's Boys. Uh, Scott Waters got me turned on to him, man, six or seven years ago, maybe. Um, and I had never seen this before. This is the Higher Ground um, double 12-inch pack. Uh, so let's see. You've got uh, side one, Higher Ground. Side two... Last thing at night, side three, needle in the groove, and mama, we're all crazy now. Um, so uh, very cool. This was sealed, and it was seven bucks. So it doesn't get um, a whole lot better than that. Pretty much in mint condition. Sorry, my allergies. Just coming back into Georgia, my allergies are already messing up. Um, another thing is I usually get quite a few singles from... Um, from the in groove, and they didn't have any other single set up yet. Uh, so, um, and I also did, I only have like 40, uh, 30 or 40 minutes to, to, to look and get going. So I was able to flip through, uh, the metal section, um, which is where I found the next one and then, uh, flip through the country and then just kind of meander through the, the, the rest of the stacks a little bit, looking for a couple of things. Um, but I didn't really get to spend the time. The record store wasn't set up yet. Um, it's actually smaller. Uh, that was the first thing that stood out. Is the, it's 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 not huge. It quite it's not a lot smaller, but it's smaller and it's noticeable. Um, but uh, it'll still once they're up and going, it'll still be one of the main stops that I hit every time I go to Phoenix. Also found this. Was super stoked about this. This is a. Uh, this is a. Yeah, Probably my top three or four from Frank Marino, but this is uh, Tales of the Unexpected. Um, a super clean um, Japanese pressing of this one. Um, he also had a Japanese pressing of one other. Um, I can't think of which one it is off the top of my head, but I already have the Japanese pressing of it. Um, and it was uh, it was mint. I mean, it's, it was still in the shrink. Uh, I already have a mint copy. The only difference was his copy had the the Obi and I wasn't going to spend the extra money just for the Obi when I already had the record, but uh, still I'm um, really happy to get that one. And then the last thing I got from, uh, from the in groove was uh, nectar uh, sounds like this. Um, so I've been looking for a copy of this for years. This is the only nectar that I haven't been able to find in good condition. Um, I have UK pressings of the first of uh, the first album, the third album and I've got super clean U.S. pressings of the others. I have I've I've only seen this in a store once, and it was trashed. I never see this one, um, so I ended up grabbing this. This is actually a reissue. Uh, I don't know anything about this label. It's on Purple Pyramid Records, so I'm uh, you know I'm not sure about the sound quality. It says it's part of Cleopatra, but uh, this is a 2013 repress of their 2000 uh, or on their their 1973 album. So looking forward to checking this one out, and I'll still be on the lookout for a nice um, OG pressing of this one. Uh, so that was it for the in-groove. And then last but not least, I hit up Asylum. So Asylum is a pretty amazing store. Uh, so it was one of the places that Scott Waters and I spent quite a bit of time when we were there last time. Um, it's got one of the best metal selections that I've ever seen in a record store. I shouldn't say ever seen that I've seen in, in, in recent history. Obviously, it didn't compare to the 80s and early 90s. But uh, um, he's got a huge metal section. The problem is um, his stuff is overpriced. Now, I will say the prices have kind of caught up with him. The guy's got an amazing store. Uh, so he actually moved to a location that's twice as big as, as it was last time I was there. Um, the guy's walls are covered in signed stuff. He does a lot of signings in the store, and then he does NAM and a couple other things. But uh, his walls are completely covered with signed guitars and drum heads and um, just really cool, really rare stuff. Um, he's got a killer guitar um, signed by Ted Nugent. He's got actually a little Ted Nugent wall where he's got a guitar, um, a, an arrow signed by Ted, and then a few of his albums um, it's it, just amazing stuff, uh, all the stuff he has signed. Uh, regardless, um, I always grab a couple things. I overpaid for a couple of these, not greatly. Um, 
I, you know, there were a couple that I, I paid too much for. However, when it, I could have got them cheaper online, but with shipping, it would have been within the same range. But uh, so anyway, I, I picked up a few singles. Uh, the first one I'm kind of kicking myself for. I mean, I overpaid for it a little bit, but the, the single is mint. Uh, so Scott Waters just sent me the Break the Chain um, single. I couldn't remember. I, I remember he sent me a Raven single. I couldn't remember which one he sent me. And uh, so I ended up grabbing it again. Um, so Break the Chain. Uh, so, I mean, regardless, uh, Raven's a favorite of mine. So, you know, I'm not too hurt by that. The guy had an amazing new wave of British heavy metal um, selection. Uh, a lot of the really rare uh, singles. Um, the problem was, I, and and they weren't really overpriced, maybe by my by four or five bucks. But if you're familiar with a lot of the, the new wave of British heavy metal singles, a lot of them go for 40, 50, 100, 200 bucks. Um, and he had them legitimately priced, uh, you know, and there were a couple that I considered, but they weren't singles that I felt that I had to have. And a, a few of them that I did really want were the more expensive ones. And there's been represses recently. So I'll probably just end up getting the represses for him. But um, he had this. This is a, this is kind of cool. This is Hollywood Stars. Um, I was immediately drawn to the picture. But then you read it, uh, Killer Original 1974 recording of Righteous Tune, co-written by Ken Fowley, Ken Fowley, Foley, Ken Fowley, uh, and covered in 1976 by Kiss on their, their, on their Destroyer album. So this is the original King of the Nighttime World um, by the Hollywood Stars. And then the B-side is Too Hot to Handle and Habits, uh, two more songs from them that were never released. Uh, let's see. It made the LA rock scene so much fun back in the seventies. I don't know anything about the Hollywood stars, uh, but I'm looking forward to checking this one out. I thought that was a, a nice little, uh, nice, uh, something I had to have really when I saw it. And then, uh, Johnny Cash, Folsom Prison Blues in San Quentin. This was, uh, oppressing. So Legacy did a few back in 2012, 2013. They were releasing a couple of Johnny Cash um, unreleased albums. Um, they'd released a couple singles, including, uh, one or two that were, that were, came with magazines. Um, this was one of them that got released. Um, so looking forward to ch spinning that. And then I got some really cool stuff here. Um, I already had a copy of this, but this one's in, in much better condition. Mine's kind of beat up. Uh, this is the, the, the Judas EP from Halloween in excellent condition. Uh, so again, really happy to have this one. You've got uh, Judas on uh, on the A side, and then uh, Ride the Sky and Guardians on the B side. I think are they both Guardians is live. I'm not sure about Ride the Sky, but uh, really nice uh, German pressing of that. And then uh, these these last three have been on my want list for quite some time, and I just never run across copies. Um, Overpaid by a couple bucks on each of these, but again, with the shipping, it's worth it. And, uh, you know, I was really uh, upset that I didn't end up getting these anyway. So we've got the, uh, is this the self-titled? Yeah, the, the, the self-titled Flotsam and Jetsam from 2016. Um, this thing's impossible to find. Uh, this is a sealed copy. This is the gold vinyl um, pressing. There's still one or two more of the Flotsam and Jetsams I'm missing on vinyl. Same thing with this band. So this is Trouble. Um, I actually haven't heard these. I haven't heard any of the stuff without Eric uh, without Eric Wagner. I, I actually didn't want to buy it, um, but I was talking to somebody who said that it's really good. So I, you know, I've kind of been on the lookout for them, uh, but when they pop up for sale, I usually see them after they've already sold. Um, so I was, I was really glad to pick these up. So this is the Distortion Field uh, sealed. Uh, this is a purple vinyl version. So this has, uh, let's see, who's on vocals? Okay, Kyle Thomas on vocals. It's really weird. It says vocals backing vocals. I, I that doesn't make sense. But uh, regardless. 
uh, happy to finally have that one. And then also uh, live in Los Angeles. This thing has been released a couple times, all with different covers. I believe, if I remember correctly, this was the original pressing um, from 2009. You've got Corey Clark on vocals on this one. Huh. I didn't know they had that many vocalists. Interesting. Bruce Franklin. Rick Wartell. Okay, so you got Bruce and Rick are the only two members. Let's see. So that's it though, guys. Um, it was really cool to be able to hit those stores. Um, if you're in Phoenix, you've got to hit up the In Groove. It, it is. The Ingroove, once they're set up, the Ingroove is one of the nicest record stores I've ever been to. Um, everything in their store gets ultrasonically cleaned. Everything gets put into everything that's not sealed. Um, gets put into the really nice uh, plastic sleeves and then gets put into Blake sleeves. Um, everything in their store is like that. Uh, I've never seen another store that, that cleans their vinyl the way that they do. Um... And they've got a really killer selection. They've always got a really good metal selection. Um, their jazz selection, it doesn't get much better than their jazz selection. And then for uh, Asylum Records, if you're a metal head, again, they've got one of the biggest metal sections. Um, honestly, I there were probably four or five more albums that I was really tempted to grab. It, it really came down to um, space. Uh, you know, I didn't want to add 30 pounds uh, to my bag. And uh, the other albums that I didn't get, um, I, I feel like I can run across pretty easily. So, whereas these, I felt like I had to grab them. So, um, that was it, guys. I hope everybody's good. I will see you soon. Uh, stay safe. Later.